How about we start off our lesson with some homework? Sketch the following scenarios. I'd like you to plot out what these graphs would look like. Keep in mind that these are not position time graphs. Rather, they are velocity time graphs. Pause this video and unpause when you're ready to compare your answers. You ready? I think I'll need some assistance here. Hey, can someone help me out? Oh hey Bobby, you're such a good sport. But I think he's here just to redeem himself. Okay Bobby, can you move forwards at a slow and steady pace? The velocity time graph is a horizontal line since Bobby is maintaining his speed, and the y-intercept indicates his velocity. Alright Bobby, can you bring it up a notch? The plot still creates a horizontal line, but this time the y-intercept is much further up, as Bobby is traveling much faster. Third example, Bobby, can you just stay put? We'll still see a horizontal line produced, but this time the y-intercept is at zero, and that's because when Bobby is stationary, his velocity is at zero. Hey Bobby, this time can you walk backwards for me? The plot is still horizontal as Bobby is still experiencing uniform motion, but the y-intercept is negative because Bobby is walking backwards. That's one of the general trends in a velocity time graph. When the data is above the time axis, the object is moving forwards, and when the data values are below the time axis, the object is moving backwards. Okay Bobby, can you start from rest and accelerate forwards for me? You'll notice that the plot starts off at zero, as Bobby was initially at rest, but then the y values gradually increase. This is what happens when an object accelerates. Its velocity increases. One more Bobby, can you run and come to a stop? We see that the plot starts off with a positive value, but over time the value drops to zero, and that's when Bobby has come to a stop. Good job Bobby, but we're not quite done yet. There's still another magical property that exists in a velocity time graph. Let's take a look at the area underneath the graph. Bobby, I need you to start over again. Let's walk forward slowly again. You'll notice a short rectangle forming here as Bobby walks slowly. Bobby, can you bring up the pace? This time, a tall rectangle is formed. As Bobby has traveled much further this time, the surface area is now much larger. So the area underneath the velocity time graph represents the displacement of Bobby. Okay, I'll give you a break here, Bobby. You can stay put. Lo and behold, the world's flattest rectangle. In fact, it's so flat, it has an area of zero. When Bobby doesn't move, the surface area is zero. Alright Bobby, break time's over. This time, walk backwards. You'll notice the rectangle is now formed underneath the time axis. In fact, mathematically, this creates a negative area. A negative velocity times a positive time value equals a negative surface area. So whenever you walk backwards, you create a negative displacement. Bobby, start from rest and gradually speed up. You'll notice the area of the triangle is really small at the beginning as Bobby is traveling slowly. But as he gradually speeds up, the area of the triangle increases significantly. Okay, this is the last one, Bobby. Start at 2 meters per second and gradually come to a stop. While Bobby is moving, there's a lot of surface area in the triangle. But as he slows down, less surface area is created. And when he stops moving, no new surface area is created. Thanks Bobby, you did great today. In summary, we learned that the area underneath the VT graph represents the displacement of the object. When the object is traveling at a constant velocity, the area produced is a rectangle. The surface area of a rectangle is height times length, so the displacement would be change in velocity times time. And when the object is uniformly accelerating, a triangular shape is formed on the VT graph. The surface area of a triangle is one half height times base. So the displacement would be one half change in velocity times time. The slope of a VT graph also has a meaning. It represents the change in velocity over change in time. In other words, it's acceleration. From math class, the slope of a line is the change in Y value divided by the change in X value. So in reference to the VT graph, acceleration would therefore be delta V divided by delta T. 
Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. We'll see why in our next example. By the way, the formula can be expanded to A equals VF minus VI all over delta T. But on a unit test, the formula will be written as VF equals VI plus A delta T. This is the standard arrangement in all physics textbooks for this formula. Uniform acceleration occurs when the velocity of the object increases or decreases at a constant rate, with respect to time. Here's our first word problem. Determine the acceleration of a Civic that uniformly accelerates from rest to 28 meters per second in 14 seconds. There are three givens in this statement. Can you see all three? Good. The first one is VI equals zero, since the car started from rest. Final velocity is at 28, and delta T is at 14. Don't forget R is for require, and we're looking for acceleration. A is for analysis, or the formula used to solve the problem, and S is for substitute and solve. And 28 divided by 14 equals 2. But what are the final units? Let's do the unit verification one more time. S can be represented as S over 1. And we'll take these units and rearrange them as an improper fraction. A fraction divided by fraction is equal to the first fraction multiplied by the second fraction's reciprocal. We notice that there are two s's in the denominator, so we'll combine it to s squared. And this is the reason why acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. As I mentioned from the last video, units have to work out 100% of the time. One more example. Determine the acceleration of a Cavalier on the highway traveling from 33 meters per second forwards to 28 meters per second forwards in 10 seconds. How about you pause the video again and we'll take it up in a moment. Ready for the answers? Remember to always state your givens. 33 is the initial velocity and 28 is the final velocity. Some textbooks use 1 and 2 for initial and final. You can still use VI and VF if you're more comfortable with that. Next, show the formula, sub the values in, and make sure that your final answer is written as a positive value if it's a vector. I'll leave all the different combinations of rearranging the formula on the right for your reference. And your homework tonight is to finish off course pack page 10 and draw the velocity time graph on course pack page 12. I hope that you did your homework last night, as there is a quiz coming up soon.